In this video, we will discuss the parts of waves and some equations. So this is the general figure you'll see for waves. And uh, they usually take the form of sine waves. So if my disturbance has a specific frequency, so if I'm uh, you know, shaking the slinky with a certain frequency or I'm creating uh, waves in the water with a certain frequency, the waves will have that same frequency. So if I'm disturbing it with you know, if I'm shaking it 10 times per second, I'll get 10 waves per second. And they'll look like this, right? So when you have that kind of constant disturbance, that means you have a continuous wave. If I just ended, sent one disturbance through, it would just be a, a single pulse, and this wouldn't make sense. But let's assume that I've created this continuous wave, and it will take a shape that looks a lot like this. The peaks here are are called crests or peaks and then here are troughs here is where the displacement is the most in this kind of like positive direction and then the troughs are where the displacement is the most negative this height a from the kind of zero to the crest or zero to the trough is called the amplitude and the amplitudes um, relates to how much energy the wave has so to get a large amplitude wave I have to displace it a lot Right? I would have to, maybe if I'm plucking a guitar string, I would have to really um, bend it back a lot. Which means I'm doing more work on it, which means I'm transferring more energy to it. So the higher the amplitude, the more energy it has. In sound waves, this relates to how loud it is. Uh, the distance between two crests or two troughs, or at kind of any two similar points, so like this point here and this point here, it's called a wavelength, and that's just the the length of one cycle. And you'll see that because it's a sine wave, it repeats. It kind of goes on in that same pattern. So just to get from one point to kind of the the same starting point, which would be crest to crest, trough to trough, or something like that, that's the wavelength. Um, and the symbol we use is lambda, and that's in meters. If I were to, instead of um, distance, on this axis here, if I put time, like in this graph, now the distance between a, one cycle is a time on this graph, right? So from here to here, that's giving me a specific time, and that is the period. The period is the time it takes to complete one cycle. So if I have uh, something with a really high period here, a long period, it means that it takes a long time for it to complete one cycle, where something with a very short period um, completes the cycle very quickly. And then a note is for longitudinal waves, they don't really look like these sine waves. Um, but we can draw them as sine waves by doing one little trick. So in longitudinal waves, instead of having kind of general peaks and troughs or crests and troughs, you have compressions, area where the medium is very dense and pushed together and kind of squished, and then areas of rarefaction where it's kind of spread out. Um, and these are what correspond to your, your crests and troughs. So if I were to graph this, I could have this compression here represent this, and then the wavelength would be the distance between compressions, which would just be like this. Um, now, one thing is that the frequency of a wave is the inverse of the period. So the period is how many seconds does it take to complete one cycle? The frequency says how many cycles are completed in one second. So you see that the inverse. So to get the frequency, you have to do the one over the period. Or vice versa, to get um, period, you do one over frequency. You see that that leaves you with a unit of hertz, which are cycles per second. So a frequency of two hertz means that two cycles get completed every second, which means that it has a period of half a second. So now if you just check out the units, if we have uh, how many cycles go by per second as frequency, and then we have wavelength, which is how long is kind of in distance a cycle, by multiplying wavelength and frequency, we'll get velocity, we'll get meters per second. And the thing to remember is that velocity depends on the medium only. So if you have one medium, it'll give you one velocity. And you'll find that the relationship is if you have a really high frequency wave, it means that you must have a low wavelength. Or if you have a low frequency wave, you must have a large wavelength. 